What's up, YouTube? XA Group Jeff 23 here, and I'm back with this another video. First and foremost, shout out to brother Reese the Watcher and George Page for showing their support for the Wrestling Talk video. Alright, guys, I just got done by watching WrestleMania 35. I'm here to give you guys my thoughts and review on the pay per view. Starting off with the first uh, match of the kickoff show, it was Tony Nese versus Buddy Murphy for the, uh, for the Cruiserweight uh, Championship. Uh, basically to say that this was a pretty good match, you know, Buddy Murphy is a very good champion. I like watching the guy um, wrestle, but uh, in this match, so I thought it was uh, Tony Nese's uh, time to shine. And I think that we made the right decision to give Tony Nese the belt. Uh, like I said before, the match was pretty good and I like it a lot. And uh, like I said, we'll hope to see more from Tony Nese uh, in our 205 man. But like I said, once again, it was a very good match. All right, so we move on to the next um, match of the kickoff show. It was the Women's Battle Royale. Now, for me, I thought Oscar was going to win the Battle Royale, you know, but WWE had a different plan. So before I talk more about it, I'll give you guys the uh, the, uh, the elimination in order. Um, the first elimination was Maria Canales. After her, it was Candice LeRae. After her was Nikki Cross, then Naomi. I, listen, man, I hate when the WWE does this, when basically Naomi gets eliminated early. I felt like she should at least last a little bit more longer in the Battle Royale, but this man he pretty much hates to uh, treat her really bad. But anyways, let's continue with the, uh, the eliminations. After Naomi gets eliminated, Emma Moon, Lana, Kyrie Sane, Ruby Riot. Liz Morgan, Selena Vega, Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, Mickey James, Sonny Deville, Oscar, and Sarah Logan. Yeah, like I said, I was surprised that uh, Oscar got eliminated. You know, I thought WWE was going to be predictable and have her win it, but they had a different plan. But basically, at the end, uh, Carmella uh, goes on to uh, eliminate Sarah Logan, and she goes on to uh, win the Women's Battle Royale, uh, which was a very unexpected. You know what I mean? But like I said, that's very nice, though, that WWE didn't went too predictable, which I thought they was going to go predictable and have Oscar win because all the shit that Oscar was going through, you know, where she lost the SmackDown uh, Women's Championship, then she was not on TV for a couple of shows. But I guess WWE went with something um, unexpected. But anyway, uh, we move on to the next match of the kickoff show. It was uh, Zack Ryder. And Kurt Hawkins versus the revival for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Uh, basically, to say uh, um, it was a pretty good match, but I was more happy to see uh, um, Kurt Hawkins and his 269 losing streak, and they reward him with the belt. Especially, uh, but since they both are from um, New Jersey, but like I said, it was one of the good moments to see him actually. Um, um, end that losing streak and I hope to see more from Kurt Hawkins um, like I said who knows but like I said it was a very good moment to see the, the losing streak come to an end at Wrestlemania <clears throat> excuse me so we move on to the uh, next match of the kickoff show it was the Andre the Giant Battle Royale now um, I didn't actually watch this match I basically stepped aside for a little bit because I wanted to go uh, use the bathroom and uh, basically, by the time I came back, uh, it was pretty much Braun Strowman um, in the ring with uh, those two guys from um, Saturday Night Live. So basically, to me, it looks like uh, they were actually rushing that match. So basically, um, from what I from what I see, because like I see, I saw the end of it. Basically, uh, Strowman he goes and eliminate both. Well, one of the guy goes and eliminate himself, and basically, the uh, Strowman goes and elim eliminate one of the uh, the other guy, and basically. He wins the Battle Royale, which pretty much, to be honest though, that was very predictable that they made him win the Battle Royale. So basically, that match was pretty much useless. But yeah, it was very predictable. But anyway, um, we move on to the next uh, match of the pay-per-view, which is the first uh, match of the, uh, the live pay-per-view. It was Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. Man, oh man, oh man, this was a good way to start off the pay-per-view. You know, I was actually happy that Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar. 
um, I was wrong in one of my videos. I thought that everything was going to repeat itself, and I thought they was going to have Brock Lesnar uh, retain the belt. But I was wrong, and they had Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar, which was a good fucking moment because, like I said, everybody in the WWE community is tired of the Brock Lesnar effect, man. Where basically the guy could hold on to the belt for whatever fucking duration he wants. And basically he could do whatever he wants, man. And I'm glad that Seth Rollins beat it Brock Lesnar, man. That's a good fucking way to start off the pay-per-view. But anyway, um, we move on to the next uh, match on the pay-per-view as well. It was AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Uh, basically, like I said, uh, it was a pretty good match. Um, nothing really uh, stand out. In this match, you know, um, like I said, the only thing I like in this match is AJ Styles 450 uh, Splash, man. I thought that was pretty nice. I always liked that move for some reason, but I like that move a lot. But anyway, uh, AJ Styles, he beat it, um, he beat a Randy Orton with a phenomenal, phenomenal forearm and basically a one, two, three, man. And also, the, a lot of the crowd was going crazy, man, because basically they wanted uh, Randy Orton to do the RKO, but. He managed to hit the RKO, but uh, AJ Styles managed to uh, um, kick out. But like I said, AJ Styles beat uh, Randy Orton with the phenomenal uh, forearm. Okay, so we move on to the next uh, match of the pay-per-view. It was the Usos defending the WWE SmackDown Championship against um, Alistair Black and Ricochet, The Bar, and Rusev and Nakamura. Uh, basically, uh, this was a very good match. Very good match. Uh, there was a moment in the match that I liked where all, ta all the, the tag team were on, on top of the rope. And basically, they did this uh, big, huge uh, slam in. That was beautiful. And I like how uh, Ricochet uh, basically was on, uh, was like on damage after all that. Like I said, and also there was another moment in the match as well when uh, Ricochet, he did the, uh, the double uh, uh, somersault. That shit was beautiful, man. That was a fucking beautiful move, man. I like that shit a lot, man. But um, at the end, at the end though, um, the Usos prevail. Um, they managed to retain their uh, SmackDown um, uh, tag team championships. You know, like I said, the, the Usos start to be a very dominant team, man. You know, they are a very dominant team. But like I said, that was a very good match, man. Also, um, we move on to the next uh, match. Of the uh, pay per view, it was uh, Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Fall counts anywhere. I'll have to say it like this from start to finish, this match was pretty good. I like matches like this where uh, the wrestlers battle throughout all the arena, man. Um, it, it had everything, you know. Uh, Shane McMahon would battle on, on the on the top of the stage. They were battling uh, in the crowd. They were battling. On top of the seat, um, basically they were they were battling on the top of the uh, where the camera is, and like I said, there was one moment in, in the um, in the match that everybody was screaming "Holy shit!" was where um, Miz was uh, he uh, uh, suplex uh, uh, Shane into the uh, the carpet as you guys can see in the slide, and uh, basically that was a holy shit moment of the, of the match, man. That was fucking crazy, 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 crazy. And as you guys can see in the slide, I asked um, the, the Miz hit the uh, the suplex. Basically, Shane McMahon landed on top of the Miz, and basically it was one, two, three, and uh, Shane McMahon beat it on the Miz. Um, like I said, that was a pretty good fucking match, man. I like that match a lot. Okay, so we move on to the next uh, match of the uh, pay per view. It was um, Sasha Banks and Bailey uh, defend their women's tag team titles against the Iconics. Uh, Natalia and Beth Phoenix and um, Nia Jax and Tamina. Um, like I said, I'll say this was a very good match, but this was a very unexpected outcome because, like I said, I didn't expect the Iconics to uh, to win the women's tag team uh, belts. I thought the WWE was actually going to go with uh, uh, Natalia and uh, Beth Phoenix, you know, because I thought. All the stuff that uh, Natalia went to, I thought they was going to be rewarding her with the belt. But I guess WWE saw another uh, uh, another route, and they went with the Iconic. was a very unexpected, uh, very unexpected outcome. And like I said, I'm happy that we actually saw something new, you know what I mean, with the Iconics winning the belt. But like I said, 
that was very unexpected. And it's good to see that. But um, like I said, not be honest though. Like I said, nothing really much stand out in the match. Only thing that stand out was just the that outcome. But other than that, nothing really stand out. All right, so we move on to the uh, my favorite moment of the whole fucking pay per view. It was Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. I don't really have to say nothing much about this match. You guys already can see in the slide. Kofi Kingston became um, WWE Champion, you know. First black WWE Champion in a while, man. That's my moment right there. There's not much that I, I can say, man. That is the moment of that whole match right there. Kofi winning the WWE Champion. There really is not much more to say. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. So we move on to the next match of the uh, the pay per view. It was Samoa Joe defend his WWE United States Championship against uh, Rey Mysterio. Basically, this was a squash match. The reason why it was a squash match because Rey Mysterio was injured. You know, um, like I said, nothing really much stand out in the match. You know, Samoa Joe beat Rey Mysterio in like two minutes, and basically, it was over. Anyway, so we move on to the next. Match of the pay per view, it was Roman Reigns versus um, uh, Drew McIntyre. <sighs> let, let me just keep it real. This match was kind of boring to me. That match felt like more like a Raw match, it didn't really felt like uh, a WrestleMania match, it felt more like a Raw, uh, a Raw match. You know, it was like really nothing, it was just very boring. I just gotta keep it real, it was very boring, and I just didn't like it. But anyway, uh, there's a couple of two slides that I missed because I actually fell asleep, uh, which I went to go see the uh, the results. <clears throat> it was uh, Triple H versus Batista. I, I only saw like a couple of it because then I started to fall asleep because one, the match was very boring between both the guys. I felt like the match was very slow. But then I went and I saw the, I went online to go see the, uh, the results and it said that Triple H got helped by Ric Flair to beat Batista. So basically, uh, Triple H's career is still is still going to continue. Um, another match that I missed as well was uh, Baron Corbin versus Baron Corbin versus Karango. Uh, from, like, from what I heard from the, the results that I saw online, it said that um, um, Baron Corbin beat Karango, which a lot of people in the WWE Universe might be upset. But I think what 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 really happened was that I think Kurgle did lost because I think they wanted to put over Baron Corbin, you know. But oh well, you know. But it's good to see that Kurgle basically had his last uh, farewell match, you know, you know. Because like I said, it's good for seeing him retire. Because like I said, there really isn't much more for Kurgle to do in the WWE. But anyway, um, we move on to the next match. Of the slide which I saw it was um the Demon King Finn Balor versus um excuse me versus um Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, to me it's, it's, <coughs> excuse me, it felt like this match was rushed as well. Uh, basically the only thing that actually stood out in this match with that I actually liked was that monstrous speared by Bobby Lashley, where he basically um Finn Balor was I uh, was outside the uh the outside the uh the ropes and basically Bobby Lashley hit the spear and he flew right through the ropes and I thought that was a, one of the best moments of the match but other than that uh Finn Balor basically hit the coup de grace and he basically beat it Bobby Lashley which was very predictable you know what I mean because like I said uh with the uh the demon um his demon gimmick basically his demon gimmick is pretty much he's undefeated. And I don't think he's going to be losing anytime soon. So, yeah, but like I said, that was the only moment in the match that, that I like. But anyway, we move on to the main event of WrestleMania 35. It was the winner takes all. It was Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Fair versus Ronda Rousey. Now, the, the, the say this, though. I know a lot of people might be upset because, like I said, they hate that uh, Charlotte Fair was added to the match, but be honest though, if Charlotte Flair was not added to this match, this match would have sucked. 
really would have sucked because, like I said, Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch alone is not enough to cl- to uh, to close out WrestleMania 35. Really, it's not. But anyway, in the match, though, uh, basically, um, Charlotte Fair basically stole the match. I don't care what anybody say. You can hate her or this, but she basically stole that match. She basically made that match good. And like I said, I'm glad that the WWE put out um, Charlotte Fair into that match. You know, because like I said, she's the one who carried that match that made it good. But uh, as you guys know, the outcome was very predictable. They had um, Becky Lynch win the match. Now, for me, I thought Becky Lynch was gonna pin was gonna pin Charlotte, but it looks like uh, Ronda Rousey was the one that got pinned. And also, I'm not too sure if I'm not too sure if Ronda fucked up at the end because it looks like it. Um, but it looks like when she was getting ready to do her Piper pit. I thought she was supposed to be kicked out. I'm not too sure if anybody caught that, but I thought she supposed to be kicked out because, like I said, the way the way Becky Lynch won didn't felt that it not felt right, and I thought Ronda may have fucked it fucked up at the end. You know what I mean? But all in all, though, I will say is congrats to Becky Lynch for winning both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship. You know, like I said, a lot of people, like I said. She pretty much deserved the, the, the moment, you know, um, to uh, win the belt. But other than that, though, uh, I would say this, though. To me, though, I still felt like that match should not have been the one to close out WrestleMania. I felt like Kofi Kingston uh, versus Daniel Bryan should have been the match to close out WrestleMania because I felt like his uh, his match was the most important match of the whole uh, pay-per-view because basically that's all everybody was talking about was Kofi uh, Kofi Kingston. But other than that, though, um, other things that uh, that happened um, at WrestleMania, you had the return of um, John Cena's the um, Thugonomics um, gimmick. Uh, basically, you have uh, Elias. Uh, you basically you had uh, Hulk Hogan come out, which I didn't give a fuck about Hulk Hogan come out. Uh, basically, what else happened? Um, you had Alexa Bliss host WrestleMania. I didn't really care about Bliss and Bliss holding WrestleMania. You know, she was just horrible. Um, another things that uh, another thing that I also I didn't like was that I felt like um, the special in, the special entrance were not great this year. I mean, I felt like this was not great this year. The the, the stage didn't look too good. I didn't like that big huge screen, and I I know. I know they could have done way more better with the, with the uh, with the with the stage. You know, I just felt like that was just lazy. But uh, all in all, though, uh, WrestleMania was uh, it was a pretty good pay per view. It was a very good pay per view. You know, very good, very good pay per view. I probably give it an eight out of ten. That's my rating. I give it an eight out of ten. You know, like I said, uh, another thing too is though there was no Undertaker. You know that that actually that actually hurt uh, hurt as well as you know because there was no Undertaker. You know, because like I say, it's just mad, very weird to just to watch a WrestleMania event with no Undertaker. But we all know um, the Undertaker, he doesn't want anything to do with the WWE anymore. But like I said, I give the pay-per-view an 8 out of 10. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed my review, the thoughts on the pay-per-view. You guys tell me what you think in the comment section. You know, if you um, disagree with me or you, you agree with me, just let me know in the comment section below. As long as you're respectful, uh, I will. Uh, I'll get with you. I mean, if you're gonna be nasty, if you're gonna be nasty or uh, disrespectful. I'm gonna block your comment. But like I say, um, I hope you all uh, enjoyed my review. I hope you all have a good night. I see you guys next time. I'm out.